Hello everyone and welcome to Internet Law Review. For today's story, we are going to discuss the apparent suicide of Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein, as you may remember, was accused of potentially being the worst pedophile of all of time. So in case you might have forgotten, let's review why he might have been the worst pedophile of all of time. First of all, Jeffrey Epstein had his own island in the U.S. Virgin Islands, which according to locals had the nicknames of Pedophile Island, Orgy Island, and Isle of Stin. According to The Independent, Epstein's island developed a reputation for depravity as alleged teenage girls were made to take part in orgies on Little St. James. Jeffrey Epstein also had his own private plane, a 727 mid-size three-engine commercial jetliner which had the nickname of Lolita Express. Anytime you have a plane with the nickname Lolita Express, you probably know that things are not going well. As part of a search warrant against Jeffrey Epstein's New York City house, the FBI found DVDs and photographs, hundreds, perhaps thousands, of sexually suggestive photographs of fully or partially nude females. In a locked safe, compact discs were found with handwritten labels, including descriptions such as young, name plus name, miscellaneous nudes, and girl pictures nudes. This, of course, is not Jeffrey Epstein's first entanglement with the criminal justice system. In a prior run-in with the U.S. Attorney's Office, in what can only be described as the best plea deal of all time, Jeffrey Epstein pleaded guilty to one charge of solicitation regarding prostitution, regarding some fairly serious charges regarding underage minors. In the search related to that incident, the police found in his home at the time two hidden cameras and large numbers of photos of girls throughout the house, some of whom the police had interviewed during the investigation, some of whom were underage at the time. Of course, it wasn't just Epstein who was implicated in all this. The flight logs of the plane detailed several prominent names, including former President Bill Clinton, former National Security Advisor Sandy Berger, former Colombian President Andreas Pestina, Naomi Campbell, former Harvard President Larry Summers, and Christine Maxwell, his former girlfriend, who was accused of helping to recruit underage girls and was present on many of the trips. Other prominent people tied in with this affair include Les Wexner, who is the CEO and founder of L Brands, which is the parent company of Victoria's Secrets, which of course implicates potential underage victims related to the Victoria's Secrets enterprise. Alan Dershowitz, a very famous attorney. Prince Andrew, who there's at least one witness who says Epstein forced her to perform sex acts with Prince Andrew. Both Donald Trump and Bill Clinton and former New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson and former U.S. Senator George Mitchell, among others. Again, one witness saying that she was forced to have sex with both these individuals on the request of Epstein. Another prominent guest of Epstein included former Israeli Prime Minister Edu Barak, who was seen to be there nearly a half dozen or more times at his New York apartment. Of course, the trail tying Jeffrey Epstein to pedophilia acts just begins with the evidence we've so far discussed. The record available from various documents in the public record seems to indicate that for years, if not decades, Jeffrey Epstein traveled across nation lines and had girls traveled for him across nation and country lines in order to engage in sex acts with them at his apartment in New York, at his place in the Virgin Islands, in his apartment in Paris, and other locations. So I think the claim that he might be the worst pedophile of all time at least has a pretty strong showing. So far, the press has indicated that Jeffrey Epstein has committed suicide. But given all the evidence we have, can we draw any conclusions as to the likelihood as to whether or not this is true? Several factors suggest that this is not just a simple routine suicide. And so let's cover that evidence that we have now. First, the location of where this alleged suicide took place is of prominent relevance. Jeffrey Epstein was held at this location, the Metropolitan Correction Center in New York. This is a United States federal administrative detention facility in Manhattan that holds prisoners for the Federal Department of Justice. The MCC can hold a population of 763 people and has been in operation since 1975. Since the MCC is located in Manhattan and keeps prisoners for the Southern District of New York, they have held some fairly high profile prisoners over the years. The District of New York deals with mob cases and drug cases and financial cases, as you might expect. And so over the years, they've held many prominent people, including some of the people on screen. Most recently of note, they held El Chapo, the notorious drug leader, who was held in this very facility 
pending his trial. So it is no stretch to say that the MCC is used to dealing with very high profile prisoners, people that might want to kill themselves and people who others might want to kill because of the evidence that they might have against others. Yet, suicide at the MCC is not a common offense. In fact, it has been 21 years since a successful suicide took place at the MCC. In fact, in the past 40 years, there's only been one suicide and three attempted suicides at this facility. This is a facility that holds 760 people and has done so since the 1970s. And as mentioned, has held some fairly high profile people, drug dealers, drug kingpins, mob bosses, mob underlings, and even the occasional millionaire and billionaire dealing with financial fraud. However, despite all these people, despite all the people that might want to get to these people, despite all the people who might have a motivation to kill themselves for various reasons, no one in the last 21 years has succeeded except Jeffrey Epstein. Prior to Epstein, the only other reported suicide at this facility occurred 21 years ago when Philadelphia mobster Louis Torreya hanged himself with a bedsheet tied to the window bars. Ironically, or perhaps not, Jeffrey Epstein also apparently hanged himself with a bedsheet. Even though it's unusual in general for anyone to be able to commit suicide at the MCC facility, the MCC had special reason to worry about Epstein being able to commit suicide, particularly since he had previously attempted at this very facility. On July 23rd, he was found unconscious in his cell with injuries to his neck, law enforcement said. And the rumors is that this was a suicide attempt. But even if it wasn't a suicide attempt, if it was an attack of some kind, either way, the prison facility was well aware of the potential risk of life to Jeffrey Epstein because of this prior attack. With specific knowledge of Jeffrey Epstein's vulnerability, either due to criminal violence from others or suicide risk to himself, with actual knowledge of this, it is even more shocking that Jeffrey Epstein is the first person who was able to commit suicide in 21 years when the prison had actual knowledge of the particular vulnerability to Jeffrey Epstein in particular. We don't know much about Jeffrey Epstein being removed from Suicide Watch except to say that he spent only about six or seven days on Suicide Watch. The reports are a little unclear at this time. But for a person who had engaged in a potential suicide attempt, at least to my mind, six days seems criminally negligently short. I don't know how you could conclude after six days that a person who had attempted to kill himself was no longer a threat to himself. While on Suicide Watch, Epstein would have worn paper clothing and a sheet with paper sheets in a closely monitored room, according to this article. I would also argue that Jeffrey Epstein was the most high-profile prisoner in U.S. custody at the time. It's hard to name any other individual who had such a high profile or who had such interest in his criminal prosecution. So not only did the MCC have actual knowledge of potential risk to Jeffrey Epstein based on either the prior attack or prior suicide attempt, as the case may be, he was the highest profile prisoner arguably in U.S. custody at the time. So if the MCC didn't already have enough motivation to watch over him because he was the highest profile prisoner, because he could potentially name names, because he could potentially give evidence the authorities were unaware of, because of the connections that he could report on, and because of things like that, the MCC also had the additional motivation of knowing for an absolute fact that he was a risk to himself or a risk based on prison population from the prior attack or prior suicide, as the case may be. So it's a little hard to understand, based on the high-profile nature of this particular suspect, when he's the most wanted suspect in the United States at this particular time, when he is the most evidence potentially to give, and in light of the prior suicide attempt of this exact person, how this could be allowed to occur. The fact that Jeffrey Epstein might have evidence against others isn't just mere speculation. According to this article from the New York Times, Jeffrey Epstein told a reporter that he had information against notable suspects. And this might be information that he would perhaps relate to the government in some sort of a plea deal. I, of course, am not the only one raising questions about this. Judith Miller, a writer for Fox News, points out that it's almost impossible to kill yourself in this particular facility. For example, according to MCC standard procedures, if you're taking off suicide watch and put into a standard cell, you are supposed to have a cellmate with you who can watch you and to make sure that you don't do anything harm to yourself. Yet against the procedures of the own prison, 
This cellmate was removed just prior to the suicide. Additionally, a prison guard was supposed to watch every 30 minutes, 24 hours a day after being removed from suicide watch, yet the evidence seems to suggest that Epstein was left alone for several hours despite this breach of prison rules and protocol. A former warden of federal facilities also expressed incredulity because this violated so many different procedures and it should have been under constant supervision, which apparently was not the case. A former inmate of the MCC facility provided information to the New York Post. The inmate saying, quote, there is no way that the man could have killed himself. I've done too much time in those units. It's an impossibility. Between the floor and ceiling is like eight or nine feet. There's no way for you to connect to anything. You have sheets, but they're paper level, not strong enough. He's 200 pounds. It would never happen. The clothing they give you is a jump in uniform. Could have done from the bed? No, sir. There's a steel frame, but you can't move it. There's no light fixture. There's no bars. So where does that leave us? Well, here's what we know. Jeffrey Epstein, who arguably was the most high profile prisoner in US custody at this time, who was alleged to have engaged in years, if not decades of sex trafficking, who had photographs in the hundreds, if not thousands of women, both underage and otherwise, who had a private island that was nicknamed Pedophile Island, who had a plane that was nicknamed the Lead Express, who has been tied to prominent politicians, both in this country and otherwise, and had already pled guilty to one count of underage prostitution in a sweetheart deal in his prior case. After being arrested, there was an apparent suicide attempt. After the apparent suicide attempt, he was taken to suicide watch, which lasted for six or seven days. He was taken off suicide watch. He was put back into a normal cell. Against the procedures of the prison, the inmate who had been assigned to the cell with him was removed. Against the procedures of the prison, a guard who was supposed to check on him every 30 minutes did not. And even though he had engaged in a prior suicide attempt, apparently was left with bed sheets strong enough to be able to commit a suicide, is now dead. The operative question is, is this truly a suicide or is it something more? Occam's razor suggests that the explanation that's most probably right is the one that makes the fewest assumptions. So here's the question for the day. Is it more reasonable to assume that a prison which has a 21 year track record of no suicides, who is used to keeping high profile prisoners, who is keeping the most high profile prisoner, who had engaged in actual suicide attempt, nevertheless engaged what could only be described as a comedy of errors in order to give Jeffrey Epstein both the means and opportunity to hang himself on his own initiative? Or is it more likely instead that Jeffrey Epstein had some help or some assistance perhaps a guard who gave him the means and perhaps knowingly looked the other way. At least in this commentator's opinion, the explanation that makes the fewest assumptions is not the one that just simply assumes the comedy of errors. Too many things would have had to go wrong by too many people acting in what would be a truly negligent fashion, unbelievably negligent in light of the particular facts of this particular individual, who he was, what he was accused of, the particular interest in him, and his prior suicide attempt, at least to my mind, that stretches reasonability too far. It is simply not reasonable, in my opinion, to assume that many mistakes happened by this many people, given this particular suspect and his high profile and the evidence that specifically warranted particular attention to him, given the prior suicide attempt in a facility with a track record against suicides. How was he the first one in 21 years to accomplish this miraculous feat given all the attention that should have been rightly due to him, given all the evidence. It simply, to my mind, does not add up. So whether or not Jeffrey Epstein himself actually pulled the trigger, as it were, this does not preclude it from potentially being a murder charge. And the relevant statute here, because we are in New York, is section 125.25 of the penal law, which defines murder in the second degree. If Jeffrey Epstein pulled the trigger, as it were, then the statute that we're most interested in is Section 2, which states that under circumstances evincing a depraved indifferent to human right, the criminal suspect engages in conduct which creates a grave risk of death to another person and thereby causes the death of another person. If a guard, for example, slipped Epstein the bedsheets in full knowledge of all this stuff that was available to him, then I would argue that you could make a better than credible case for depraved indifference, which according to New York law would qualify as murder in the second degree. So even if Epstein did actually hang himself, 
it does not preclude this from being murder in the second degree under the New York statute. But perhaps you think second degree murder goes too far. No problem, New York has you covered there too. Section 125.10 of New York law defines criminally negligent homicide, where a person is guilty of criminally negligent homicide when, with criminal negligence, he causes the death of another person. I would argue the facts here do suggest criminal negligence. So again, even if Epstein hanged himself, this might be legally a homicide on the behalf of someone else. That someone else being the person who presented him with the means and opportunity to hang himself. So even if you believe Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide of his own free will, which I personally find slightly hard to believe given all the evidence we've discussed, it doesn't mean that he wasn't also murdered because New York State defines murder in a way that would potentially capture conduct even if Epstein did hang himself, despite all the evidence that he shouldn't have had either the means or opportunity given the various things that we've reviewed. It simply seems too unlikely in my opinion that with a 21 year clean track record of not having suicides, the MCC with particular knowledge of the threat to this particular individual given his prior suicide attempt, with particular knowledge of the importance of this particular suspect given his potential information on other people, nevertheless somehow through some comedy of errors simply was given the means and opportunity to hang himself as merely a whoopsie by the warden and other authorities in the prison. Simply put, at this point, given the information presently available, it is in my opinion more likely than not there's some information that suggests foul play. By whom, I don't know. There have been various conspiracies, of course, that have tied this to the Clintons or the Trump. In my opinion, any such ties is grossly premature at this point. All we know is that there was a suicide and it's under what I would consider very suspicious circumstances. Who is implicated in this? We don't have anywhere near enough information to conclude. We of course would start with the warden and any prisoners and any jailers that had access to him as potential suspects and we would go from there. But we don't have enough information to conclude. Regardless whether or not Epstein, as it were, pulled the trigger, in my view, this reeks of foul play and there's someone else who's responsible. To what degree, only time will tell, but further investigation is in my opinion warranted because in my opinion, the facts in this circumstance say that suicide simply does not make sense. But until later, my friends, this is all. I hope this has been helpful. Until later, cheers and goodbye.